I think we did it. It's been a long time since we've done a stream. There's lots of little widgets and things that I have to turn on and you know how it goes. How about some clapping at the start of the stream? Yeah. Folks, I haven't done a stream since November. Uh, the last streams that we did were for the Switchwire. Dave and I from Printed Solid, uh, we took like three streams and we built that Switchwire. Um, and that was fun and all, but uh, the last couple of months have been really interesting. We have lots to talk about today. Um, we can go in any direction you like. Probably the people that weren't at Murph are tired of talking about it, <laughs> it's like tired of hearing about it. The people that were there are probably still exhausted from being there, so we can talk about that if you'd like. Uh, I'm glad that. Yeah, there were some folks that came back from Murph with COVID. I hope you're all doing well. Um, me and the wife were very, very lucky. Uh, sh we've been both testing all week. No COVID. I feel great. Um, so, thank goodness. Uh, but I thought it would be a good time to do a live stream. We have a very interesting 3D printer today. Uh, and of course, there's a story with everything, right? Uh, there's all kinds of awesome people in the chat. I see Andy, Andy Rogers, Dan, Derek. I saw Sergio. Yep. James Rushmar 3D. Uh, Dutch developer is here. Joel Driver. I'm not going to hit everybody, but we're going to chat for the next couple of hours. So I hope to, you know, catch up with you all. Uh, the printer, there's really not much of a printer build here today. It's just an excuse to, one, buy a 3D printer, and two, do a live stream. So it's going to be good. I hope that uh, I hope everyone enjoys this. I do intend to do some more live streams. I always say that, I know, but I'm going to this time. I swear. There's some there's some 3D printers coming in uh, that are going to be pretty interesting. We have some things we need to do live, so we're going to do it. I promise. So, how has everyone been? I hope you're do all again. I hope you're all doing well. Um, one thing that I did want to mention for this. Okay, so YouTube has been super challenging recently. You've probably seen my video. You've probably seen other people's videos. As YouTube is transitioning, they're trying to go more towards shorts. You know, TikTok is a thing, whatever. Uh, so it's been super challenging. The subscriber count has been really low. Uh, YouTube has introduced an option in chat for, for live streams. So if you are not a subscriber, you have to subscribe to be able to put stuff in chat. Most of the people that come to these live streams, they're already subscribers. It's not going to impact you. I don't know that it's a good or bad idea to turn that on. We do have it on today. Um, the intent for today is, is we lose a lot of subscribers just by what YouTube does. It seems like over time, your subscribers will fall off and you don't even know that you're not a subscriber. So I turned it on today to maybe, I, if you haven't live streamed in a while, Usually your live streams aren't promoted, so the live stream might not be that big, but I'm hoping that turning that on just gets a few more people back on the page. We'll see what happens. And as if we do more live streams, they get promoted more to try to bring new people in, I'll probably turn it off. But let's try it for today. We do have our moderators in house. I know Mike Fancy, Never Let The Machines Win is here. One of the best mods in the business. So uh, we are going to do well. Twitch is another thing. Uh, I haven't gotten into Twitch. I know a lot of folks are, but maybe down the road we can try it. I don't know. YouTube's always been my platform. So you know where to find me. Uh, everything happens on my channel at 10 a.m. Central Time, and that is 3 p.m. GMT. So I kind of isolate everything towards that time schedule. Uh, Streamlabs is up. I hope it does the voice recognition thing still. Sometimes it gets broken. We'll see if it does that super chat. Andrew, just so I don't forget, thank you very much for the 10. That was much appreciated. Oh. No? <laughs> okay. So, uh, voice recognition is not happy at the moment. We'll try that again. Because I didn't get to buy you an adult beverage at Murph, thank you very much for the 10, Andrew. It was great to see everybody at Murph. It's been so long. Uh, Brian Vines is here. Hello, Brian. Just to keep with the tradition, 
Welcome to Chris's shipyard. <laughs> so that one worked. Uh, Derek, 25 bucks. That is much appreciated, sir. Chris's shipyard. Yes, we're going to get back to it. Hey, let's try this one again just to see if it'll work now. Let's replay it. I don't know why it didn't like that one. Oh, well. Well, yeah. Stream, Streamlabs is, seems like it's been buggy since it came out. Okay, so let's get to the printer. Yes, this is a Prusa. Yes, I have a lot of them. This is a Prusa Mark III. This is the fully built unit. So, Prusa has been in business for 10 years, and that's kind of hard to believe. I've been with Prusa, using Prusa machines since 2016. Um, I use them all the time. Are they the best printer in the world? Probably not. Are they the fastest? Probably not. Do they make the best print quality? Probably not. But I can tell you what they are. They are super consistent. Uh, Prusa does a lot of development on their printers, on their firmware, on their slicer, on their filament. Now with Prusa Link, they're using farm connections. I mean, Prusa does things end to end. They do it really well. Now they're bringing in enclosures. That's what they do. And if you've ever had to deal with the folks at Prusa, they're all pretty awesome people. I got to talk with a lot of them over the weekend. Uh, I'm just a Prusa fan. I like what their company does. So why not get a couple of Prusa printers? There's a lot of farms out there now that are using these things. Well, this one's a little different than the regular Mark III. Keep up great content. Awesome. Thank you, Gary, for the five bucks. That is much appreciated. I'll do my best to keep up the great content. This is the 10th anniversary edition. Now, there's really not a whole lot different about the 10th Anniversary Edition. It does have a gold frame and a few different things, so we're going to check it out. This is more of, a, again, a way to get back into live streaming. We're going to check out the printer. You know, we'll probably print Benchy. I got the special first anniversary gradient filament from Prusament, the Prusament Anniversary uh, filament. It probably won't work that great on a Benchy, but we're going to use it anyway. So, let's check this thing out, what they did with the Anniversary Edition. We'll chat again. There's a lot of things to go over. I got coffee, I got snacks. Everybody's ready to go. Okay. So I do have multiple views again, but with a box this size, you're probably not gonna get a lot out of it. Um, that's gonna be way too close. We'll just wait until we get it out of the box, and then we'll do um, we'll do some side view action there. How about that? Let's just get it out here first. Steve builds. Got to see him at uh, Mernith. Welcome, Steve. Uh, also, I wanted to mention uh, our lovely Patreon supporters. They're all awesome. They're they're a lot of what keeps us motivated, right? Uh, you don't make a whole lot on YouTube. Uh, unless you, you know, unless you're way into it, you get sponsored, all that kind of stuff. We just kind of do YouTube as, as we feel like nowadays, right? Um, Patreon is what keeps us going. Our, our Patreon supporters are awesome. This, this coffee right here was, the beans were sent to me by a Patreon supporter. Uh, I don't know what their logo is or like their slogan for their coffee, uh, but sponsored by Cactato Coffee. They're not paying me, but I am drinking their coffee. There you go. There's your sponsorship. It's kind of a local thing. I believe he is in Mass. Uh, they do like hand delivered coffee beans. He roasts, you know, he does the blends and roasts. It's really good coffee, by the way. Um, I will try to find you a link to them. I do believe they ship. I need to get some more of it, actually. I'm running out. It's good stuff. So, them shipping me the coffee. Awesome. Thank you very much. Power cord. We get our congratulatory, you now own a Prusa, and we get our gold bears. Gold bears are the most important part. If you've never owned a Prusa, we'll just kind of go through this whole thing. Also, fun fact, uh, <laughs> I need a sponsorship. All right, Brian, you're in it now. Uh, so if you've never owned a Prusa, uh, thank you 3D Jeff for coming. I know you have to leave, but Thanks for joining us. If you never know Prusa, you get the receipt with all the stats that, that uh, comes from your machine, the test that they did. This, the fun fact is, I have never bought 
a fully assembled machine and had it shipped. I did buy a fully assembled machine from Murph. The guys were tearing down and they were gonna sell the machines on site. So I bought one from Shane, actually. Shane from Prushif, you don't know him. Uh, I got one of those machines and it was fully assembled, but I've never had one shipped. So I've never really done the unboxing experience for one of these machines. So we're gonna go through that today. Now, by all rights, they should be fully ready to go. You unpack them, you hit print, and that's it. So uh, we're going to uh, give it a shot. I also kind of want to check out the documentation just to see what it looks like. Again, this would be my first experience. Full end-to-end -end experience, and I'm sure it's lovely. Uh, we got some basic filament. So this is, so that's the silver that comes with all of the printers. I guess this is still created by, so it's not officially Prusa Mint. So Prusa has like basic filament. If you remember back in the day, they had Prusa brand filament. It was all made by Filament PM. Now, I'm not sure if that's still the case on this. I think it probably is because they are a Czech company. It looks like the same stuff, but you do get a spool of filament. I think all of them still come with that silver. So that is on. So pretty much this whole thing just lifts out after that. What's in here? This is our accessories. So I'm guessing like spool holder. You get extra parts, of course. You get uh, alcohol wipe, an acupuncture needle in case you need to relax later. Uh, spool holder. Mold as well as some tools. You get your Prusa lube. We won't talk about that. Your SD card, your USB cable, and some glue stick. So all of the standard Prusa fare there. And I love these boxes, by the way. I know they're just kind of filament boxes, but they're handy. SD card. And I think this whole thing will just lift out. Now, will it clear the ceiling? Probably not. That is the number one question that I always get when I go, or it's not a question, it's a statement. It's a observation that folks like to make. The first thing they say is, I didn't realize you were that tall. And I think that's a, a normal thing for every YouTuber. It's really hard to convey height uh, on YouTube. Um, but my, I think mine is even worse because I am so close to the ceiling. If you've seen one of these live streams before, there's no way I would have room to get anything out of this box. I have about, I don't know, 18 inches. You can do the metric on that, but not a lot of room. So there it is. That is a pretty gold frame. We also get this. This is our sheet. It should be our paperwork. Do I have to eat the gummy bears after each step? I wonder if they include that in here. So there's your cert with your, all your information, when it was produced, this was made in June, uh, and your number and your special 50th anniversary, no, 10th anniversary. I wonder if I'll actually see the 50th anniversary. Uh, maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, and your special sheet. God, I'm almost scared to print on this sheet. That's, this will probably be a, a wall hanger. You do get a sheet on it and then your special 10th anniversary sheet. It's awesome. Congrats to Prusa, by the way. Um, they've really done a hell of a job. Uh, uh, say what you want about Prusa. I mean, it's not everybody's thing but i think over the years especially given you know the last couple of years have been kind of eh, um i think they've done a great job so congrats to them and again really nice folks 45.72 centimeters thank you mindy okay 25 year for sure yeah let's, let's hope for the best all right let's take the glacier off of this thing it used to be just like zip ties i think and now they have an actual neck pillow that it'd be pretty hard to get your neck in that one maybe for your cat they have the e3d sticker on the side of the motor that's cool so let's just have an up close look around shall we 
do a little tour of this golden machine. That ain't gonna work. There we go. There it is. Okay, so the real question is, which number did I get? These are, there was only a thousand of these made. Uh, I got, oh, come on, Joe. Is that a one or a four? <laughs> uh, 129 is what it looks to be. And it is signed there by Joe. Here, I'll let you make the call on that. One or four. I'm going to go with one because I feel more special. But there it is. So no Prusa orange, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Orange probably wouldn't go all that well with uh, gold. We got the gold frame. All of it is black. This looks to be all galaxy. It's nice and glittery. They have tested it for us on the sheet. Even the bezel down here has 10th anniversary on it. It just looks pretty good all around, folks. I really dig it. Check your Twitter for, okay, thank you. That's good to know. So it looks like a one. There you go. There's, there's the spin. Give it a little twirl. Looking pretty good. All right, so next up, did they leave just enough room to get the plastic off of the screen? I can't imagine Prusa wouldn't do that. Yep, they bubble it up just enough. Let's see if we can get it out of there. I probably just ruined it by pushing it down. I'm making it worse. That's, I love peeling these off and then I don't like peeling these off. I'm always uh, reaching for sharp tools and I'm gonna put a scratch on it or something. My fingernail definitely can't get in there. Oh, they do. I was going to say, I thought this was the one-sided knob, but no, they all have the three-sided knob. This would actually be the first one I've ever owned that had the three-side on it. If we scratch it, we'll only scratch it a little bit. I was thinking about this earlier, too. Uh, nice. We got it. Uh, so these all have the blue screen on them. Let's go ahead and plug it in and check it out. But with this printer, it would have been pretty cool for, to have the black screen. You've probably seen the black, black and white screens from LDO. Blue screen looks good. You know, they're auto dimming and things now. But uh, the black screen would look pretty sweet with all of that. So they reset them for you. Let's just run through it real quick. Okay, so they want you to do the whole wizard again. That's fine. We're going to set up all that good stuff. Please remove shipping helpers first. Now, there used to be like, I want to say there was some zip ties and things like that on there. I believe the shipping helper nowadays is just that piece of foam. So I think we're good there. I do, I mean, all of the paperwork and everything, it shouldn't give you uh, a whole lot of instructions. Most of it is, uh... oh, they even give you like, I've never actually looked at this book. They even give you like flow charts and things of what you can do if, it's, if you need to assemble it or if you have a made one. Check it out. I didn't even, I've... <laughs> I, I should have read the manual a long time ago, I guess, huh? All right. So anyway, let's connect, let's uh, continue on, and we can do the spool holder and all that good stuff. We're gonna pull our sheet off. We have to pull the print off of that anyway. And now it's gonna do Z. A lot of you have probably seen this, but this gives you an idea of what um, Prusa ownership will be like. Is the steel sheet on? No, it is not. Oh, so they just do, for the, for the pre-built, they just do the Z-Calc. They don't make you do X, Y, and Z, which would take, which would have you uh, pull the sheet off. We had to pull our print off anyway. I'm just glad that they didn't give you just one sheet and all it is is the 10th anniversary one, because I'd be 
scared to death to print on that one right out of the box. Greg from Greg's Maker Corner is here. We have to save our Prusa off of our 10th anniversary. I should probably uh, write something on that so I don't forget what it's for. And definitely we're not going to uh, be able to go that long without starting to have some snacks. We do have gummy bears here, so... All right, so we're all the way up. I'm sure the nozzle is clean, but let's make sure. We're good. I always wondered why Prusa never put socks on their V6. But anyway, all right, so we're good. Now all it's gotta do, so since it's pre-built, I guess all it's, it's gotta do is the 9.Z level, and uh, then I'm guessing a quick nozzle height adjustment. Maybe not even that. We'll just see what it says. I like the fact though that there's difference. There's a difference in between pre-built and uh, kit firmwares. That's awesome. They really do think of all the little things. Of course, I can't go with anything on the SD card. I have to slice something myself. Now it's preheating the nozzle. And again, we are going to use a super awesome special filament. I am gonna wipe this bed off because there is some dust on it. We'll get out our awesome gradient filament. Again, the Benji is not the uh, not the model to do with your gradient filament, but since we got an anniversary Prusa, I figured we needed anniversary filament. This is the one year anniversary gradient filament. You get a clear one, black one, kind of a green to gold type of deal. So we definitely have to try this out today, just for this special occasion. I'll even use, which I almost never use, I'll even use the spool holder that comes with the kit. A lot of people will tell you this is probably not the best idea, but, you know. Alright, filament is out. Let's see, where are my cutters? I need to get better at my stream deck. I bought that thing and barely ever use it. Grold, I like it, Brian, Grold. Checking it. Glenn Hogue is here. Glenn, unfortunately, did get the COVID. He said he was feeling kind of sick. Uh, so, Glenn, I hope you start feeling better. Sorry that that uh, crept up on you. If this scars my pretty gold frame, I'm going to be, like, more than upset. Unfortunately, I mean, I say that, oh, this is 10th anniversary, it's so special and everything, and it is, don't get me wrong, but you know, like, in a week, I'm going to be using it, and, you know, uh, it's going to have, like, the worst hot-end blob you've ever seen in your life, and who knows, but we'll see. Bling printer, I like it. I usually never... Gold bears are awesome, by the way. Um, yes, filament's good. All done. Happy printing. So, it didn't do, uh, Z-calibrate, any of that stuff. And since it's already printed, I'd say that's probably, you know, par for the course. I say par for the course a lot. I've never golfed a day in my life. Anyway. 
just an observation. So let's try to set this guy over here. And then we will, because I really, the smart thing to do right now would be to do a, like a first layer calibration. But I honestly want to see if straight out of the box, all you had to do was line up Z again and then go straight into printing. Because that's what it, it's assuming, I believe. If we hit the button again, yes, that's what we're assuming. So I would like to go ahead and test that. I've got my super awesome Vinci on my SD card that was provided with my printer. And we're going to print it. Um, let's do super awesome first layer action rather than far out. And then maybe we'll move to far out after, uh, after that. I don't know how many times I've spun this camera. The cord just looks a little curly. Some printer block. I, uh, I talked to Joe not too long ago and he sent me some files. I really need to get on that. Uh, that's a pretty cool project. Printer block. It's kind of Lego-ish, I would guess. Oh, I think I, I did, I had, I wish this thing had some rubber feet on it. I did, um, switch to autofocus on this thing. We'll see how it focuses. I believe, because I had it on manual forever just for things like this. So let's see what it does today. I was trying to get it over here so that we could do other things if we need to. So yes, again, a very easy printer day. And by the way, I don't know if I already said this, I advertised more for this stream, which I advertising, than I have for any other stream because I hadn't streamed in a while. I actually put it on Twitter, I almost never do. I posted it on YouTube, which I never do. So uh, let's see what the turnout's like. But uh, that's, that, you know, people tell you, well, this is how you should, you know, free online courses, by the way, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, free online courses when you buy your printer now, I do fully intend on taking the courses that they have out there, because I think that they would be worthwhile. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything to take them, right? So I think, uh, I think we should definitely take advantage of, of their services. But anyway, uh... They say, you know, like you're supposed to be this YouTuber and you should, you should do this and you should remind people. And it just feels like I'm bothering folks most of the time. So I never, I never uh, publicize anything. See how we do. I only show up due to the YouTube posts. Okay, well, that's good feedback. And there you go. Your first layer is doing fantastically. Can we get it any lower so we can look really down low? There you go. Man, this is like record time here to get a printer set up. What a nice looking skirt. Brian is a connoisseur of skirts, I heard. Actually, I didn't hear that. It's made that up, but I'm sure he is. Well, excellent. So that's, that's good to know. So maybe the YouTube posts are where it's at. Because YouTube is horrible about you know, giving people a heads up on live streams. Would you look at that? Another Benchy going down. So what else? I mean, we've already done the hard work. Now we just got to hang out. I got a new power cord. I always like it when I get new power cords. So the... Oh, I, there's all kinds of things that we can talk about. Jeez, I feel like I should be saving some for an, another stream or something. 
uh, we can do whatever view you all would like. We will periodically check in with the Benchy, I'm sure. So, I got a new stool. I got it off of Amazon, of course, because that's pretty much where I buy everything. But this one I can actually kind of set. My, my old one was about, I don't know, eight inches shorter. This one I could actually set down if I wanted to and maybe work on some stuff. So that's pretty cool. I could hang out even longer so I don't have to stand around. Um, there was something else I was thinking of. What was it? I don't know. Now that I can, uh, coffee time, I feel like it's too soon for coffee time. Dave Wilson is here, my buddy Dave. You predict it will be seaworthy. Awesome. What's the special part? The special part is that it's a 10th anniversary Prusa. It's the gold version. What new progs from Murph am I excited about? Honestly, being at Murph and like having a table, you don't get to walk around and look at stuff <laughs> as much as I'd like to. Um, there was all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, I don't know about new projects. There was a guy there that had pick and place PCB. Like it was kind of a 3D printer-ish design. That was really cool. I don't remember the man's name, unfortunately. Um, Coco Press was there, of course. You got to see all kinds of 3D printed chocolate. They, from the last time that I saw them in 2019 at Earth, they have really stepped up the game. It's, uh, it's way more advanced now. They're doing some really cool things. It's always cool to see that. Um, Jim from the Edutech was there and he brought his Bamboo Carbon X1. I know everybody's always talking about that. So I got to look around at that a little bit. So that was okay. Uh, I was right next to Project Red. Uh, Joe and team brought some stuff. They have a Core XZ that they're going to put out. It looked pretty cool. Um, what's the one? Starts with a D. I can't remember the name. The printer that they were making for a while. They have like a new tall version. That was pretty neat to see. Uh, Bill Steele was there. I don't know if you know Bill. Bill could very well be in the chat. Um, Stephen Hawes? Still his name wrong, but thank you anyway, Mitch. Uh, Mitch 3D was there, um, and Mitch is always a good time. It's, it's always great to see Mitch. In fact, I have some very... Uh, how do you say... Dautilus? That's close enough. That, yes, that is correct. That's what I was thinking. Um, I have some really interesting video that's going to come out next week. So all week, this week, and next week, I've got all these shorts coming out with interviews from Murph, and I have some really interesting video footage from Murph that will be out. Uh, you will get to see that, so stay tuned for it. it. Some of it involves Mitch, and it was a great time. That, some of the, uh, some of the things that happen at Murph, it's like the side stuff, that's the really interesting stuff. Um, what else projects? I got to see the Prusa Enclosure. I got to see the Prusa XL. That thing's quite large. Um, what else did we see? There was all kinds of like rat rigs and borons and all that good stuff. I got to talk to my buddy Jason over at LDO. Jason is the man. He's a really cool person. Uh, I got to see that. I got to see the Recreate Filament Maker. That, like, you turn your Ender 3 into this filament creation station that does PET bottles. It, like, cuts it, makes it into filament. That's pretty neat. i kind of like to build one of those someday. Is that a gold-plated <laughs> log? Lol. Awesome printer. Fix'em Dude! Ten bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, I have my new Fix'em Dude sticker. I know I put one up. Yeah, there it is right there. It's a nice silvery one. Yes, you probably can't see it because the printer's over. Oh, no, there it is. There you go. I updated my sticker wall since I came back from, from Murph. That was most important. Um, the baby belts were really, really cool. Yes, yes, I thought that was neat. Uh, the, I got to talk, to talk to Sam Prentice for a while. Sam's a really cool guy. You should check out his channel. He's the one, the Death Racers, that they're like jousting, rock'em, sock'em, 
RC car robots. You have to punch the head off the other one. That was pretty neat. Uh, we Joel Telling actually did the 60 second video thing this morning. He released it. We got to do that. Um, and let me tell you, like they say, okay, 60 seconds go, and then you're trying to talk about stuff. Uh, it's like, I don't know what to say, so I'll just keep rambling for 60 seconds. But anyway, I did that, so that was pretty neat. Uh, the micro mill, see, there's what that that's what I didn't get to see. Laser cut, uh, 50 bucks in parts. That's awesome. There was just so much stuff. Robert, I am doing great. Thanks for asking. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Mine was fun. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, there was something else I was thinking about Murph, and I led into something else. And then... Now I can't remember because I got too many... Th so, as a maker, like, most of the people that are watching this are probably makers. You make stuff, you know, that's cool. I get into these spots, like, like sometimes I don't want to do anything, right? It's like, I don't have any ideas, I'm just kind of tired of making things. Um, nothing has really grabbed my interest. But then you go to events sometimes, and that, that gets you sparked. But actually, I was kind of excited before Murph happened. So now I'm in what I call like maker mania. I'm a little bit manic about making things. I have like 12 ideas, but can't concentrate on one <laughs> to, to actually make anything work. So I'm going to have to get out of this somehow. So there's all these different thoughts I have. I need to like write them down and say like, no, you shouldn't make a roller coaster in your backyard. Or, you know, like prioritize some of these things so I can actually get something done. But right now, like I'm thinking... Like, I was thinking this morning, plus I've been getting up, like, wicked early lately, like, 5 a.m., and I don't know why. But anyway, um, I was thinking this morning while I was having some coffee, the, the first 14 cups of the day, and, like, there's only so many things you can do, right? But even, like, today, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this live stream, we're going to check out the Sprinter, it's going to be awesome, but then what am I going to do with the rest of the day? And then I'm like... Boom, there's 10 things that I should do for the rest of the day. And I bet you, after this, I wander around and do like one little thing on 10 different projects and that's it. So I got to get out of that. Maybe less coffee is what I need. Pump for all of them, but can't focus on one. I, that's it, man. I, it happens. The coaster, if you had a space, see? Sleeping less comes with age. See, now I'm going to have more time to sit around and think about this, Sergio. I got to see Sergio again. Sergio, if you don't know Sergio, HVAC, A to Z, uh, he's one of the greatest humans that ever lived. I'm just going to say that right now. And I always enjoy seeing him. I hadn't seen him since 2019. I did not know that he was coming to Murph. And then, boom, at my table, there he is. So I got to take selfie with him. Uh, I got to talk to him for a while. But Sergio is my buddy. He brought us donuts, which is amazing. Uh, so it was great to see you, Sergio. If, again, if you don't know him, one of the best. You need to make a time machine to get more stuff done. Absolutely. I take that. I would, uh, I'd put some money in on that one. If that was a Kickstarter, I'd back it. Uh, in fact, that is so funny to me. I'm going for it. Uh, <laughs> never less coffee, Bob. Yeah. Uh, that was another thing. God, there's so much stuff. Uh, Last night, so they, they do like a Friday night call. Uh, Matt Stoltz over at Prusha, he puts out this Twitter usually, and you can like join this call and hang out with people. I actually got to hang out with a couple of folks like Bob uh, last night. And it, it, like, I didn't say much, but it was just really entertaining to listen to the, because this is the first time I'd ever joined it, right? It was just really entertaining to listen to the back and forth. And just, it, it felt so normal because like one topic would start and then the rabbit hole, you know I mean, just straight down. And, you know, it, just to give you an example, it could start with, like, a logical idea. Let's build this. And then at the end, it was like, you know, for some reason, it had a chicken coop, and we could only use, you know, duct tape to put it together. 
and uh, then maybe we didn't want to build that whole thing at all, uh, just something that would house said thing. I mean, it was like, it, if, you, if you make things and you, do, you pencil out stuff, you know exactly what I mean. But the call was very interesting. I enjoyed listening to it. I had to jump off of it a little early, unfortunately, uh, due to some other stuff, but it was a good time. My phone is doing stuff. All right. What else? Paul was there, my buddy Paul. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was good to just to hang out and hear what folks are doing. That is always awesome. Um, yes, I know, that is unfortunate. Prusha did did raise their prices, but that's kind of what everybody's doing. Uh, nobody likes it, but unfortunately, it's the reality. Prince all had to do the same thing with their filament. Yeah, that's the Dustin Speed. I got to talk to him at uh, at Murph. I that's the problem. Like, and I feel bad because like people just keep coming, right? And I want to talk to everybody at least for a little bit, and I'd like to really hear about the stories because people are doing a lot of interesting things. Things, and I did get to hear some of them, but everybody had one. And then like you people come up just to say hey that you've known for years, and it's like I know I haven't seen you in a long time, but hold on, I I need to finish this. Uh, there's just not enough time at these events, but hopefully there will be more of them, and we can, you know, we can thin it out a little bit, get more one-on-one -on -one time. Did I order an XL? Yes, uh, I have an XL on order. I've only, you know, I'm only in for the deposit or whatever it is right now. I really haven't decided how far I wanted to take the XL. I saw it again over the weekend. Um, it had you can put five extruders on it, five different tool heads, whatever you want to do. I don't know that I want to take it that far. I really don't see the need for myself to take it that far. Um, maybe just like two. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I think we probably have a few more months before we have to actually decide what version we want to get. Local maker. He liked the filament that we had. I've I've got so many. Um, I've got so many awesome coins and stickers, but for some reason. This one got stuck to log, and it just rode that way the whole way home, and now it's so it's right here forever. So there is their maker coin. It made it back. I don't just throw maker coins away, by the way. They all come back. I've got a drawer, a giant drawer of all the ones that I've ever collected, and some of them make it like this one's got a magnet, so it makes it over here on the shelf. Uh, local maker liked the filament that I made. Yes, Dave, I am going to Earth. I will be there. We have a table. We're in. Did I talk to Nero or Taylor? I talked to him for a moment. He was a very busy dude. Uh, I was very busy. He came over to the table and chatted for a bit, but I didn't have a lot of time to talk to him. He was, uh, there were a whole lot of Voron folks there. They were always doing stuff. Um, the filament. So what I did, and I've, you've probably seen it, and I still have some more. I actually, I actually came back with some. So what I did was take... Printed solid, they have like a couple of different colors. Officially, I believe they have four. They have a couple of different colors of UV filament. So, you know, black light's your friend. And it looks pretty cool if you haven't seen the shorts or whatever that I did. Uh, but I just, I used the palette too, like the first time in a long time to make filament out of those four spools. And that's the filament that we printed at Murph. And there's a look at it. But it's spliced. I believe we did like 240 millimeters per splice. So it gave the benchies and whatever we printed a pretty cool look. So that's what Local Maker is talking about. So this is what we did. We had a black light on it the whole time. Um, the cool part was, is the Sanjay tribute, you know, the, all the different uh, pieces that everybody printed. A lot of people brought them. A lot of people printed them at Murph. We did like three at Murph, uh, just the little tiles. Um, they were done in the black light. So they, they're a really interesting crosshatch. I really wanted to get over there with the black light and just see, you know, see a scan of the whole mural and I never got it done. I don't know what happened to that, but if anybody knows what happened to the Sanjay mural at Murph, um, I would pay some money to have a picture of it with a black light on it, just so you could see the three tiles we did stand out. That would be really awesome. 
But anyway. So what do we got? Uh, U2 on the XL, absolutely. Murph was awesome. It was, it, it was just, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to gauge it towards any other Murphs because it was like no other. It was just great to be back to talk to folks. I know some people didn't fare as well after the fact, but uh, I had a really great time. I got to bring my wife. Some of you got to meet my wife. She was there helping me out, which usually I had to do all this stuff by myself, right? Uh, and so that was a huge help. Uh, that was awesome. I was really tired though. Like it, somebody was saying, well, we were staying up till 2 a.m. I was like, I couldn't even hold my eyes open until like 1030. <laughs> we get up like super, again, I've been getting up really early. We get up super early, get the coffee going and I'd, I'd be passed out by 1030. So I got a lot of good sleep while I was there, but there was also a lot of driving and, you know, standing around and all that good stuff too. Uh, Vitsu, subscribe. Thank you very much for that. I missed uh, Jammy subscribed. Thank you. <laughs> uh, was the shaky table printer set up even more stable on the rickety foley tables at Murph? Maybe. My table was actually pretty good. Uh, so I'm sure there was varying degrees of table. I actually had two tables, which I wasn't expecting. I would have brought more stuff. Um... One of the... John Cook is here. Hey. Uh, you throw a hydrate, but this isn't Twitch. Yeah, I, I, I don't know anything about Twitch, unfortunately. Old Curmudgeon is here. How's it going? Um, Jim from the Agitech is here. Hey, Jim. It was great to see you. Great to do interviews. Again, we did a whole bunch of 60-second interviews with folks. We've been playing them on shorts. Jim was one of them. Brian Vines is in here. He was one of them. They were a lot of fun. Um, spools, green gate, filament. <laughs> so I thought I had this thing in the bag, as usual. Like with contest, it's like, oh yeah, I got this. You know, it's like that's how I go into things. I was like, yeah, no, no problem. We're gonna win this. And so green gate was gonna give away some things if you brought empty spools. And my first question is like, okay, how many can I bring? And they're like, bring all of them. And I said, okay. So I didn't actually get to bring all of them. I still have more. But I ended up giving Greengate 81 empty spools at Murph total. So I brought 79 and then I emptied two while we were there. And they were partial spools, no big deal. But, you know, with the black light filament rolling it on different spools. So I ended up giving them 81. So I came in second. Uh, but only to the guy that showed up, and I apologize, I don't remember his name. Because I talked to him. Uh, Jim might know. I talked to him. Jim did a video on it where we like help this guy unload, but he showed up with a pickup full of spools from like his makerspace. I mean, like there had to be like 500 there or something. I don't know. There was a lot. So he blew the whole thing out of the water. But I do now, not to say that I'm a poor loser, <laughs> but I do want to say that I emptied all those spools myself. Just saying. <laughs> But no, the whole process, it was awesome that Greengate did that to take those spools and then they're going to put filament on it and sell it. Uh, I mean, that, that's a huge win, a huge win for me. That gives me so much more space to stack up more empty spools. So I'm just appreciative that they took them and they're going to do something with them. Jim also had an awesome idea. I think it was Jim's idea where we would sign some of the centers of the spools randomly next time. So you sign them and date them or whatever. And then when you're done with your Greengate filament, then you realize where the spool came from. I think that'd be kind of neat. It's kind of like a, an Easter egg. I think that'd be cool. I think we should do that next time. Walk around to Earth. Awesome. Awesome. We might have to line something up. So Earth is a little more... Um, I wouldn't want to say Earth is strict. And I also don't want to say that Earth is more well organized. But I'll... Uh, I'll just let you take that in how, however you wish. But Earth, one, it's a little, so they're in an arena, right? It's at a college. Um, so it's a little more expensive to be there. You do have to buy a ticket to get to Earth. I believe they're $5 or something like that. But to have a table at Earth, it's a little more expensive than it would be at Murph. In fact, like over double. But 
Um, it's a lot nicer facility, but you have to sign a contract and I'll, it's not just like handshakes like we do at Murph. You know, you talk to John or whoever. And, yep, you got a table. Boom, done. Uh, you have to sign a contract. You know, it's a little more, there's a little more to it. And in that contract, like there's, there's, with that money, they give you sponsors. Like they put out advertising. Um, if let's just say somebody wanted to come to Earth just to talk to me, I would be expected to be at my table like the whole time that they're open. And it's, it is open Saturday and Sunday. That is in the contract. Now, that's not saying that, you know, I can't step away and look at stuff. Uh, again, my wife will be at that one too. So she is an official representative of the company. Company. But it is just a little, and, and I applaud them for their efforts. It's a little more rigid than Murph would be. So that people, you know, you, they don't show up and there's an empty table. Like, like say, like somebody big, like E3D or Printed Solid or somebody. Somebody came to, to check out what you got and then there wasn't anybody there at the table. That would be a real bummer. So I totally get why they do that. But it's a little, it's a little different atmosphere. It's a little different thing. So we'll see how it goes. I have officially been to every Earth that they hosted. So I want to keep that, that record going. That's awesome. You actually have to man your table? I know, it's weird. <laughs> uh, but it's a good time anyway. A coupon in the middle of the spool? That'd be cool. Like a, yeah, like a UPC sticker or something they could slap on there. A lot of the, the absolutely, Mike says it, uh, a lot of the rules at Earth are because of the venue, right? It is a college. You can imagine the different rules that they have there. It'll be your first Earth. Awesome. Earth is a great time. Uh, I'm hoping like Earth gets to the level of turnout of Murph. I'd really I, I haven't seen it yet. I would really like to know the numbers at Murph this year. What our turnout was. They usually have a pretty decent count, I guess. I'm not sure how. But this year they didn't sell tickets. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But I'd like to see, you know, the, what the Earth and Murph counts are going to look like this year. Um, I'd like to see some more Rep Rep festivals. I talked to, we talked to Georgia over at 3D, E3D for a little while. They were kicking around an idea of like having one, you know, I don't know what their time frame was or anything, but having one, you know, in Europe, like a, an official Rep Rep Festival. I know there is one. I want to say it's like Berlin or Germany, whatever. There's also the Sweden meetup. I'd really like to go to that someday, but it would be cool to have a couple of more murph like events around i'm still holding out for verf for like a las vegas one or like you know southwest one just to give us an excuse to get out that way i think that'd be kind of fun steve will be the earth awesome see you there <laughs> make a stamp with my signature we could do that uh, the track, the number of orders at the taco truck. They had a taco truck. The taco truck was so awesome that one of the ladies that worked at the taco truck would come inside and give you last call for tacos. Now that is service. I loved it. I didn't get to eat any of the tacos, but uh, people were saying they were really good. There are some uh, signatures on the Green Gate Spools in the wild. Okay, excellent. That's good, good. Uh, did we sign one? I don't even remember now. I signed a lot of stuff. It, it's weird signing stuff when you're me. I don't know. Hey, sure. Here you go. I don't... It, if that makes you happy, I'm absolutely happy to sign anything you wish. Special, special film clips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The graphics on the truck were amazing. I have to say that. Get Joel on that. Tom, Llama's here. What's up? So, yes, all kinds of stuff has been going on. How is our, uh, how's the Benchy looking? Got a little shine on it. What's it look like? Doing good, doing good. The printer's doing well, right out of the box. So we're good there. I think we should have our granola bar for snack time. And then have some more, uh, Harbo... Gold berry. It's warm down here today. I act like it's not the summer. I signed one and then signed the printer that was given away. Okay. I don't really remember that, but I'm sure I did. 
<laughs> There's just so much going on. This filament is the one year anniversary Prusa P E P T G Prusa Prusament filament, the gradient filament. So it's PLA. It's not the recycled one. Is there like a tag on this, I think? Maybe. Excuse me while I eat, but I've been trying to eat more. I uh, avoid eating sometimes. And my doctor says I shouldn't do that. There you go. Yeah, I know. I'm old now. I go to the doctor, which it's not my favorite thing to do, like like it is for anybody. But um, some days you wake up and it's like, man, I don't feel so good. I wonder if it's because I've had 80 cups of coffee and nothing to eat for 18 hours. And it turns out the doctor says, like, yeah, that's why. Why'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. Sounds like a good idea at the time. What is the temperature? 23.5 C. It's a little warm. Not bad. It's very still in the basement. All right. What else is going on? What what other stories can I tell you? There's so many that I've missed. Worth on working on something in the Northwest. I love the Northwest. I'll be there. <laughs> You're taller than I expected. I, I want to wear a shirt that says I'm taller than you expected. Bringing home COVID wasn't your best move. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry that happened. I honestly, I'm shocked that we didn't get it. Um, just I, I, I don't know who, who the hell knows. But I, I'm thankful, and I'm bringing you the stream today. You have to laugh, laugh or cry. I screwed this filament up. Now it's going to be a pain. Um, something interesting, something else interesting that happened not so long ago. That's exactly what I was getting ready to talk about, James. So, the E3D had an auction for the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation. And there are a lot of cool prizes. They had like 26 prizes. The ultimate prize was like, there was, two, they did two Prusa printers that were like, I don't even remember what they called them, but it was like all the different iterations of Mini Joe, like the different times in the company. And it was all based around a 3D printer. It was orange. They did two, one for the Prusa archives and then they auctioned one. And honestly, I put down some bids on that printer. I didn't get anywhere close to what it went for, but I really wanted the one-of-a-kind orange Prusa. I wanted that. That would have been really cool. It went for like 12,000 <laughs> pounds. So I wasn't even close to being able to get a hold of that. But I'm glad it did because it was for charity. And then Joe ponied up a bunch of money and like a trip to Prague if you got this thing. But anyway, so that was the auction. So I was at the auction. I wanted to help out. I wanted to buy some stuff. So I ended up with 10 spools of Polymaker PLA, which if you don't know that stuff, um, I can grab a spool. If you don't know, I believe this is Polymaker Polylite. Yeah. They actually try to give you some idea of what color you're going to get. Uh, it's, it's pretty nice filament. I like it. I've used it. I haven't used it a ton, but you know, they do the cardboard spools. This is teal. 
They do have measurements on here. But I wanted to say this one, they would actually give you, it's not on the box, but like when you order this stuff, here's the teal color. They actually give you like some sort of idea what the colored code would be for this. You know, like, you know, the old school hex number of what color would act, what it would actually be. So they try to align it somewhat, but I got 10 spools of that for a really good price. Um, I believe it was like, I, and that, that was shipping included, right? Uh, I believe it was like 300 pounds or something for 10 spools. So for a fundraiser, I thought that was pretty cool. But I also got a 3D printer out of that auction and I wasn't expecting to. Like that was like a last minute, we were like $50 back and forth in between me and somebody else. And I, I managed to just pull it out right at the end. But uh, we did that. And I ended up with, oh, now I'm gonna mess it up. Zax, it's a Zax 3D printer. And the printer, and it's a Turkish company. And it's a pretty high end looking machine, honestly. I believe they go for like 2200 somewhere in that neighborhood. It's fully enclosed. Um, it has a lot of features on it. I believe it's Core XY. But I wanted to check it out. I'd never seen one before. Plus, I have some buddies that are Turkish, which they're awesome guys. But anyway, that's beside the point. I got one of these Zax machines at the auction. Um, and there, I don't know if they've shipped it yet. They're getting ready to ship it, whatever it might be. It's coming from a long way out. But I got the Zax X3, which I'm not sure if that is ready to buy yet, because they also have a larger machine. The X3 is like 220, 220, two something. Um, and then the Z is quite a bit bigger. But they did tell me that they, they're not just shipping the printer, they're shipping, they're shipping us a surprise. So, and that's going to be probably the next live stream. As soon as it shows up, we're going to unbox that printer and see what the prize might be. So I'm really looking forward to that. We'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's the stuff that I won at the auction, but it was for a great cause. And uh, we all miss Sanjay. I, that's one thing that I can, and like, I'm glad that nobody, like, I didn't discuss it. Nobody I saw discussed it. Uh, and I don't think you probably should. But I can tell you that is one thing that it kind of felt missing. And it was kind of sad, and I don't want to bring the stream down. But uh, Sanjay was such a character, and uh, he brought a lot of life to every room. Like, he would come by your table, and if there was something that could be messed up, Sanjay would mess it up. <laughs> uh, so, we miss Sanjay, so anything we can do to, uh, to help that effort out, we're going to do. So that's awesome. But anyway, back to better things. What's going on, chat? Uh, 3D printed RC plane in polylight. Hmm. That'd be interesting. RC plane. That's one of those hobbies I always kind of wanted to get into, but then thought like, you know, I'm going to wreck the first one and then the second one and then who knows. And then I've dumped a bunch of money into it and then I won't want to do it anymore. You know, that's kind of one of those things. I do still want to do the roller coaster out back though. So, for all of you in the United States, this is 4th of July weekend. 4th of July is on Monday. Um, 4th of July is always a good time. Get out in the yard, you know, celebrate by celebrate America by blowing a little piece of it up. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. So hopefully you're all going to have a good weekend. Kyle Davis, thanks for joining the stream. It was good to see you at Murph. It was good to see a whole lot of folks at Murph. And unfortunately at Murph, a lot of times I don't even have time to swap names with you. I try to, but a lot of it is just like, hey, Chris, good to see you. Uh, like, hey, good to see you, buddy. And, and that's all you really have time for. I wish there was a little bit more time to interact, like I said before, but it is what it is. It's great to see all of you. Get a simulator first. That's a good idea. Yeah, the big puzzle was awesome. I'm glad I got to contribute to that. E3D never got their stuff out of customs. I was talking to them about it. Of course, everybody was probably asking them about it. And I guess they were just going to, like, they, there was no time to get it out, so they were just going to send it back. But 
That was a bummer. But the community came through. There was a lot of E3D printers and stuff at their table, so so we at least got them something to show. I got to talk to Keith. You might remember Keith. Um, Keith used to work for Protopasta. Now he's over on the E3D side. I got to catch up with him. That was cool. Been seeing him a long time. Signing Prusher printers. <laughs> he even signed one of the Voron printers. Yeah, I know. Joe came over. He signed the one we took. I didn't have a signature on that one. He, he got that one. Nicholas came over. We got to chat with Nicholas for a while. If you've never seen Nicholas on the Prusa channel or met him in person, he's like one of the most energetic people ever. Um, he's a lot of fun to talk to. He's super interested in everything. Um, He's one of my, not saying anything about Prusa folks, but there's, I, I've got the chance to meet a handful of Prusa folks over the years. Nicholas is like, got to be in the top three. <laughs> I won't tell you who the rest of them are, but he's just a really nice guy. It was so much fun. That was the best part about Murph, right? It always is. It's just getting to talk to the folks. I really didn't have much to bring to Murph. You know, it's just the same old stuff. Everybody sees Log on the videos, the shaky table, probably everybody's really tired of seeing that by now. People were like coming up to me as like, can I buy one of these from you? I was like, um, I guess you could, but you shouldn't. <laughs> like, they were like, and they were like pallet too. Some people were really confused about how I made the filament. So they wanted to buy filament from me, like I made it to sell. And then they wanted to buy a pallet too from me so that they could make their own. And I, man, I, I, after like five or six people mentioned that, I was like, man, I should have really thought, rethought this whole thing. I should have bought a stack of pallet twos. I should have made a bunch of filament. <laughs> but it was kind of weird. You know, people don't fully, they don't understand that I'm just a content creator that's come to hang out with folks because I bought a table, right? They figure it's a vendor of some kind. But no, I just come there, hang out, do my stuff. See you later, old curmudgeon. Thanks for joining. Got a pick of the famous log? Awesome. I see my uh, stream stuff over here. It looks like it's going well. I Honestly, I wasn't exactly sure how the stream was going to go today. I haven't done a stream in ages. YouTube was complaining at me a bit, but... Uh, the So you have your, your live stream control panel or whatever they call it. Um, it keeps po po posting a, a blurb out here, like pointing at things on the screen. And it says, now's a great time to insert an ad. You can earn more revenue by showing ads to your audience. I'm like, that doesn't seem fair. Don't you watch enough ads? What am I going to get from that ad? Three cents? Okay, I got you. I'm, I'm going to put my money down. So you don't have to watch that ad. Kitchen mixer is a filament winder. I, I, I remember that conversation at Murph, and that was a great idea. They like took the back off and set the speed down, because I think it's just like on a KitchenAid or something. It's a belt move, like, like a drill press or something. Set the speed down real low, so it pulls the filament off the pallet. That's the worst part about making filament, is trying to figure out how to spool it up. That's another one of those projects that I've had running around in my head. It's like, man, I could make like this really cool stand. I could weld some pipe together and like put a, put like a gas pedal on it so that you could make this wool go faster. But I'll never get that done. <sighs> I feel like I've told you a whole lot of stuff in like just a very short amount of time. How long have we been streaming anyway? Hour and 12 minutes, yes. I feel like I've been just hammering you with information. I'm trying to be so entertaining. Well, and Mike, it's... Especially in the new building, right? It's like, uh, there's so much room, and there were so many empty tables. But a lot of them were the free tables, right? The ones in the center that makers can grab. Uh, but I feel like we should help out Murph as much as possible. We want to keep this thing going. So I try to do my part. See you later, Jim. Have a good one. Feel better?
Robot Hut is here, John. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope the live stream is special. Again, haven't done one since November. Really got to get better at that. And honestly, the last couple of months, like, well, like probably since November or December or whatever, have been really tough. And winter is always kind of crappy anyway, in the, especially in the Midwest. You know, any, like, late December after Christmas until, like, March, the weather sucks. You don't want to go outside. You don't want to do anything. The days are super short. It's kind of depressing. And uh, those of you that do not know, and I, again, don't want to go down a, another depressing subject. We lost Hank the Basement Dog this year. We lost him back in April. And it honestly, we, I had him for 14 years. And, you know, I don't have any children. Um, like, I had him longer than I've been married to my or known my wife. Uh, it hit me really hard. I'm not ashamed to admit that at all. It still sucks. I mean, I, I don't know that I'll ever fully get over it uh, because he was my buddy, right? Like anything I did, Hank did too. He, a lot of the videos that you've, you've ever watched, what, what, he's been in a handful. Uh, you know, we've showed him on the live streams. He's usually like standing right here, you know? And when, when you're connected to somebody like that, um, and Hank was like the quietest, you know, uh, easygoing dog. Like you could not shake him. Um, it just, he was scared of a few things, thunderstorms and fireworks and stuff that kind of irritated him, but man, you just couldn't bother this dog. He was just so easy going and he's like, eh, yeah, I just kind of stand here and, you know, chill out. Uh, so being, ha having him be so part, so much the part of my day, you know, like everything, uh, it was really hard to lose him. And he was really sick the last couple of months. Like I was even like. He slept with us in the, in the bedroom, and like for some reason as he got sick, he, would, he didn't want to. Like the, it was something about being dark, like he wanted the light on, it spooked him, I don't know what it was, but he wanted to sleep in the living room, but he didn't want me to not be there. So I slept on the couch with him for like four months straight. <laughs> uh, poor guy. Um, it, you know, it's always hard, but that, that has been a big factor in the content, as well as live streams, it's like I just everything's so different. But finally, getting back to like the new normal, like what things are going to be, um, and I'm hoping that you know things get better from here on out. Assuming ten cents per ad, one ad every ten minutes in a three H streams, twenty five streams per year amounts to approximately forty five dollars. <laughs> here, sponsored, <laughs> Derek. Thank you very much for that. 45 bucks. He, he, just, he just kicked in for all of you. I mean, we, he just helped us all out. That was really awesome. Thank you very much for the 45. It is much appreciated. Yeah. Uh, Hank was a very good boy. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that all. And I, I know, I don't, again, I don't want to bring, bring everyone down for this live stream, but it has been pretty tough. And uh, I'm, again, I'm feeling better now. I mean, it's starting to get a little more distant. Uh, that was back in April. Uh, so it's getting better. I don't know that it'll ever be like, you know, perfect. Someday I would like to get another dog, but you know, that's like, I don't know if you've, you, a lot of folks that have had a dog for a long time. It's like some people are like, yeah, let's just get another dog. And I totally get that. I haven't had, I haven't been without a dog this long in more than 20 years. We all, it's just like one dog after the other. And you know, you'd have two at a time for a while, whatever. This time it's like, I don't know if I can do it again soon. Plus, you know, when you have dogs or kids or anything like that, you got to plan. You got to make sure somebody's watching them. We always used to take Hank on vacation with us. You know, we'd do a lot of car trips. He went to South Dakota with us. He went to Colorado with us. Um, he was really, you know, really good in the car. Um, but, you know, if we fly to Earth, we got to find somebody to watch him. And, you know, I worry about him and all that. So I'm not really looking to rush into another dog anytime soon. But usually in, in the case too, it's like, I never go looking for a dog. It's like dogs find me. Hank was the same way. It's like the, Hank was like on his way to the pound because somebody couldn't take care of him. I'm like, nah, just bring him over to the house. And then 14 years later, here we are. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I don't intend to, to get another pet soon, but you never know. Next week I could have another dog. It's just, that's how life goes. But anyway. Life is a series of dogs. That is a great sentiment. I, lo I like that phrase. That's awesome. Mitch3D, are you, I think you're back to the stream. Thank you, Mitch. 
uh, was I think he had it in Murphy. No, he was not. I talked to Scott. Scott, if you don't know him, Scott Latine. He's kind of the curator of Marlin. He was not at Murph. He had to to uh, step out of that one. But I do believe he is going to try to be at Earth. I think Scott is still down in Texas. I don't. They were talking about moving. I think again or something. But I think he's still down there. Um, he was not at Murph, but I hope to see him at Earth. It's always good to catch up with Scott. He's one of my favorite folks as well. Mitch is moving to St. Louis officially. So M Mitch and I got to spend some time talking uh, at Murph. And so he's, I believe he is in Texas right now as well. Um, he's going to move to St. Louis. And I'm, of course, in Kansas City. Well, right in the middle of St. Louis and Kansas City, almost dead on, is Columbia, Missouri, where the, where the college is. Um, they are like the only place from here to St. Louis. There might be some along the way. I don't know. It's the closest one to me that has a White Castle. And you either love White Castle or you hate White Castle. Mitch and I share a bond, and we both love White Castle. So I would love to line up some sort of, like, even if we got, like, a handful of Missouri folks, and we just all go to White Castle, and we buy like 400 cheeseburgers. But I think that would be, because it's about, I want to say it's like 90-ish miles, maybe 100, maybe get close to 100 to go to Columbia. I think that would be a great afternoon. All the St. Louis, all the Kansas City folks, who, wherever you come from, uh, Jeff City, we'll meet in Columbia, because it's kind of in the middle. We'll have some White Castle. It'll be a good time. Doubles with cheese, yes. Hank to the Christmas basement logo. We, you know, we we had we had stickers this year for Hanky. Uh, he it was his face on it and everything. Hank the basement dog. Uh, we might we might do something like that. I don't know. Uh, Dave Randolph kind of has the Jesse market cornered with his dog, but we'll see. Dave Wilson's in. Yeah, he is. Dave. Uh, I got your email, by the way. I'm going to send you one back. Uh, we need to catch up probably like either tomorrow or something like that. I got some. Uh, Dave Wilson, if you know Dave, he could not make it to Murph. He was on vacation. Uh, so I grabbed some swag for him. And uh, I got a bunch of stuff for Dave. So I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you, Dave. Again, probably sometime like tomorrow afternoon. I'll send you an email. 20 Crave Cases, please. <laughs> I, the first time I, so it was, it's been many, many years ago. Uh, the first time that I saw the Crave case, like that hasn't always been a thing. I was like, Crave case? And, and I, I totally read it, Grave case. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. And I, I was hoping that that was their actual marketing. Because I, for, if anybody, if it fits to have a, a hamburger or it, it, don't even call it a hamburger. It's a White Castle. I, ca I cannot even put the two together. Uh, if anybody had a food that would admittedly kill you at some point and have a marketing scheme that involved this food putting you in your grave, it would be White Castle. And I would respect them 100%. So I really wish it would have been For great For coffee case. and doubles with cheese. Love the Cactato coffee. Uh, Dustin, thank you very much for the 20. Cactato coffee is awesome. I got the, uh, oh, now I'm not going to remember. What did he send me? There, he has like four blends. In fact, let's just do a link to, to Cactato coffee. He's going to be like, what are all these orders? I can't fill all these. I don't even know if he's, honestly, I don't even know if, um, he sends stuff, but he's cool. Well, shop coffee. Which one did I get? So yeah, he's in mass. Uh, it's really good. Which one did I get? I got the Guatemalan blend is the one I got. It's pretty good. And it's not like super knock your head off coffee either, but I need to get a hold of him and see if he'll do like, like a taste test for, cause he's got four different uh, roasts right now. I need to get a hold of him and see if he'll do like a four pack or something. There you go. So check out Cactato Coffee. Official coffee of 3D printing. I'm just going to say it right now. Rubber stamp it. 
Do White Castle deliver? <laughs> you could get them frozen. I, don't, I haven't seen a frozen White Castle in a while, but they're not the same. Uh, Crystals, yeah, Crystals is down south, which is kind of like White Castle, but I do believe they are a bit different. Dan has one two miles from his house. I'd be even heavier than I already am. Uh, Whataburger is expanding. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, the, uh, our quarterback, which I don't watch football, but everybody knows Patrick around here. I guess he had a hand in like bringing Whataburger to Kansas City. I don't know, but there are a few around town now. It used to be just like down south. Dunkin' Donuts. See, that's a, that's East Coast, too. A, a lot of folks will say Dunkin', that's where it's at. I'm not a huge fan of Dunkin'. I mean, it's okay. I will not turn any coffee down. Absolutely not. But I'm also kind of the bargain basement coffee drinker. Just it, Coffee is more about, it's not about taste, it's about quantity. <laughs> so, you know, a giant can of Folgers, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, one other cool thing I got to do, um, and I'm going to mess it up. Proper printing? There's like half a dozen P. Proper printing is John, right? I think it's that's John. Anyway, Stefan CNC Kitchen, I always mess that up, and John traveled together to come to Murph. I got to spend quite a bit of time to talking to them both. Both very interesting folks. And I never get enough time to talk to Stefan. Um, he's just a really good dude. And uh, so. That was one of my highlights. I got to talk to those folks. Stefan actually gave me some of his inserts. They have, they have like CNC kitchen brass inserts and toolkits now. They look really nice. He gave me a handful of those. So that was cool. I want to try those out for the project. But it's always cool to see, you know, all, all of the, the people that, that come in, you know, YouTube people. Like I watch YouTube just like everybody else does. Uh, it's always good to catch up with those folks, you know, people that kind of do what you do only on a much higher level, I'm going to say. John and Stefan make videos that are amazing. Uh, and of course, Chuck Hellebuck. I got to talk to Chuck. Chuck is a buddy of mine. Uh, I got to talk to Chuck for a long time. And he seems to be doing pretty good. So it's always good to catch up with Chuck. John is great. 13 hours to, to White Castle. That's quite the hike for, uh, for White Castle, I would say. Still worth it. Absolutely still worth it. But quite a ways away. <laughs> uh, Dan, you don't think I'm going to gain any weight? It's kind of a revolving door, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, maybe not gain weight, but definitely quality of life going to go down. <laughs> Just from having to filter them. John's videos are awesome. Like, and that's one thing that he said is like, I'm not sure people get my humor. Uh, it's like, oh no, we get it. <laughs> it. There might be a little bit of a barrier there, but... They're hilarious. Uh, and, like, he's an awesome maker, right? He makes some of the coolest stuff ever. So, in those videos, I, I told him, I was like, man, your videos have to take a ton of time to make. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, and sometimes they don't turn out, and then you have to do it all over again. And like, I, I can't even imagine. We probably have, like, like, in one of our videos, end to end, I probably have, like, six, seven hours in each one, probably. Maybe a little less, depending on what we're doing. You know, if there's testing involved, lots of testing, you'll have 20 hours in it. But those guys, like, minimum, it's like 60 hours to put one of these videos together. And that's, you know, that's why they're so high quality. I mean, they do a really good job. So, I couldn't even imagine doing so. I, there is not enough time in my life to do stuff like that. But I'm glad that they do it. Starstruck with John and John, yeah. Hey! And I've talked, I haven't talked to John before. I, I really don't know him all that well. I've been watching Stefan for years and years, and I have spoke with him quite a few times. So he, and he's like super personal, personable too. Uh, you know, and not everyone is, you know, we all have, you know, the, like social anxiety in the maker community with all of us nerds. That's not uncommon, right? But not with Stefan at all. He's uh, super easy to talk to. He's like, it's, he's your best buddy. So not with him so much. Um, but again, it, it's, it's been kind of different for me, I guess. Like, like when, when I went to the first, my first Murph or something, there were a few folks that, uh, that I had that, Hey, I know you, like, I've seen you somewhere. I know you. It's like a starstruck kind of thing. It's kind of funny. It's like Joel telling it, it's like, and I've talked to Joel many times over the years, uh, you know, and on the side and social media and all that good stuff. And he's a really good dude. 
but he has a lot of followers. You know, he's he's still telling. Um, he's just one of those folks, you know, you can sit down with at the table and say, hey, what's going on? And, you know, it's no big deal. Um, the one person that I still remember for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but I remember the first time I spoke with them was Alex at Protopasta. And I was like, hey man, I remember watching this on YouTube and I love what you do and you added bacon to filament. And, I, and he looked at me like, um, okay, calm down. <laughs> and I have no idea why, just in that moment when we had it back and forth, I was like, just all of a sudden I saw his face. I was like, oh, I totally know you and all the stuff that you did. And it just all came out at once. <laughs> I think I freaked him out just a little bit. Uh, but I, I don't, that's really the only one that I can remember that that happened to me. Of course, I'm excited to see folks that, I, you know, that I've seen before, but uh, it was kind of funny. I, I'll, I'll always remember that moment. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Joel's in the know. I mean, this is like his whole life. He knows folks. A well, link to John, absolutely. John deserves as many subs and views as possible. Let me find him really quick and you will get one. Here, you can check on the Benchies status. Uh, you. What's that site called again? You something? No, me, no, you something. Now we can find out if I messed up his uh, channel name. Mm -hmm -hmm. Man, I'm subscribed to a lot of channels. Potent Printables, whatever happened to Ali? I haven't, I haven't talked to him in ages. I got to talk to Making with Luke. Um, Luke is the young man. He was at Earth or Murph, Murph many years ago. Uh, he has some really awesome ideas. He's working for some outfit now. I'm sure he's like in his 20s by now. Uh, but he was at Murph and I got to talk to him for a while, which was awesome. Luke is one smart young man. Um... It's really hard to find anything in this list. Let's just search it. There you go. Man, he's uh he's climbing. Sweet. And here you go. You might know him from the person that made a 3D printed wheel for their car. Check out John. He is an awesome creator. Luke is awesome. Luke is way above where I was. Steven the Lightspeed, I got to see him at Murph. How's it going, Steven? Uh, it, Andy, it would take you seven days, 16 hours, and 32 minutes. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. It was, it was very tough to, uh, to not fanboy for the first visit. It, that was quite the experience. I will never forget going to Murr for the first time. Lauren had a question. Thank you for keeping me on task. Uh, Lauren, 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 uh, Uh, it's the first time. Awesome. Welcome to the live stream, Lauren. I wish you could freeze this. The idler is clicking and it won't go through the selector. And then she followed up with... Love to start printing. Okay, we can do that. This is for the next supply of coffee and donuts. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sergio, for the 50 bucks. That is huge. 
again, Sergio brought us donuts at Murph, and they were good. Uh, my wife didn't want to share, but she uh, she did anyway. So good honor. Okay, Lauren, you're and I, I never mind fielding questions like this. So bring them on. Um, I'll get to what I can. Uh, so the selector is clicking, and you can't get it to feed through there. So that's not an uncommon problem. So one, the first thing that I would look at is what version of parts do you have? There are a lot of different iterations at NMU parts. Some of them have tried to remedy that exact problem. Um, the filament path, as you come through the selector, they've widened it up. They've also added the cutter. Um, and that was way later. That was supposed to be the beginning, but they did that like sometime last year. Um, but that is the key to to the MMU. You have to have that path, that filament path, clear end to end. Um, if you can't feed it through, like with everything off, you know, you roll the idlers back or whatever. If you can't feed it through, and it doesn't feed really easily, it's not going to go. The most common thing that I see, if you if you see it clicking coming through the selector is where that uh, Bowden connector actually screws into the brass inset. Sometimes it will catch uh, on the actual coupler uh, and it, it won't come through. So that's the first thing that I would do if I were you. I would check out the version of parts you have and it might be kind of hard to tell, I understand that. Uh, but just go to the Prusa site, grab their printed parts and like put one in your slicer and kind of compare it. There might be just subtle differences that might help you out of your situation. The next thing I would do, pull the Finda probe out, get the bearing out of there, get, get it all cleaned out, and reset it, right? Make, make sure that you don't have it squished too far down onto the filament. It goes through, ni again, nice and smooth. And that, that's caused more problems than anything. And the big problem, uh, one of the big problems with MMU is how many particles it creates because it can grind the filament really easily. The first problem, just the whole MMU experience, right, MMU2, the first problem that you need to solve is your filament. Uh, if your filament doesn't turn easy, you can't get it off the spool super easy and put it back, then you're not going to have any success. I really like, there's a lot of different ways to buffer your filament for MMU2. There's a lot of different community projects that work pretty well. There's a company that makes what's called an RMU buffer. It's a 3D printed tower that goes next to your printer that helps you buffer that filament really easily. It gives you a really nice direct connection to the buffer so that it makes it easy to pull filament on and off. That's the, that's the whole key right there. That's 90% of it, I would, see, I would say. Everything else after that is making sure that you have the filament sensor that's on the extruder lined up properly. It's got to be working 100% and that Fenda probe set. And as long as the filament path is good after that, you should be good to go. I have invested hundreds and hundreds of hours in tweaking and setting up the MMU. It takes a little bit to get it going. But once you have it, once you understand, it works every time. I haven't had a problem with the MMU in a long time after I got all that sorted out. So there was a whole lot of information. I probably didn't answer your question at all. Uh, but it goes through with the selector off. So that's probably what I would suggest. Like, make sure you have the most current part. And also, if you want to send me pictures of it, like if you think that I can help, or if Prusa support isn't, you know, like they're, they're really good, but they can't fix everything, right? I mean, they're not at your printer. But if you'd like to send me pictures of it, if you would like to have a conversation about it, I'd be more than willing to try to help you in whatever way I can. Uh, that goes with that goes for anybody that's on this chat right now or that you know comes to watch my videos. I can't get to everybody. I can't spend a whole lot of time with everyone, but I do my best. I do have help. My lovely wife tries to help me out with some of this stuff, but you are more than willing more than not willing um, more than welcome <laughs> I'm losing words now. You're more than welcome to send me an email. Send me some pictures of it. Um, I can spend a couple of minutes and see what I can help with. So maybe some of that information helped. I don't know, but give it a shot.
It's an adventure. Yes, Mike is trying to upgrade his MME with the with the most current parts. It's kind of hard to tell because they've had a lot of different parts while, while they're trying to get to Nirvana, right? I don't even think I have the most recent parts. Um, I I can tell you one of the things when they went when they actually did add the cutter feature, which the cutter will get you out of some situations. Like if the tip isn't quite right, it'll snap it off, and then you can you can go ahead and feed it. Um, so I like the cutter. One of the things when they finally did add that, the piece in the front, like so right behind the selector where it picks up, where the filament goes into the selector, but it's on the body, that front cowl there, they tightened that up and reshaped it just a little bit so that you could get a better slice on the filament. It was a there was less tolerance in between the two parts. That is crucial if you want to use that cutter. It gets you, I wouldn't say it really gets you the filament any closer to the selector, but it does line up a lot better. So check out that part. And the differences are very subtle. So it's kind of hard to tell. But give it a shot. I'm guessing though that one of the parts you have isn't quite in spec or, because I mean they're 3D printed parts, right? Anything can happen. You might just need to reprint that selector part. I've had to do that a handful of times. Don, the German 3D printing nerd, is here. I haven't seen him in ages. Hello, Don. Seems like the stepper motor is off. Okay. Huh. I just put it up there in the chat, but I can do it again if you need my email. Hopefully these are coming through successfully. I should just put it on Nightbot and just have it. Uh... There you go. So I think that I've gone through everything that I had to tell you over the last eight months, I think. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. Um, yesterday, and there's a lot of people in this chat, I have a lot of friends, like solar power, right? It's bigger than ever. But a guy came to my door last week or something, and he's like, hey, we're looking for houses to put solar on. Well, you know, he came to the door, whatever. Seemed like a really nice guy. So I'm like, cool. I'm like, so let's book an appointment and let's talk about solar. Because I have a lot of questions. And, you know, me and questions, they get really involved. They're really involved questions. Um, so I spent like a week researching solar and everything about it. So I'd have these really quality questions. And he did a fair job at answering them. He did, he did okay. I met with him yesterday. He did okay. He didn't know all the ins and outs that I really wanted to know, the, the deep down stuff. But he did fine. What I was hoping, and, and I realize these are door-to-door -door people, right? It, it's not going to turn out like you think it's going to turn out. But I was hoping. I was hopeful. And I never mind. I, I'm, I'm the type of person, like, when somebody calls you on the phone trying to sell you something, or they come to the door, I like to have these really long-winded conversations until they don't feel comfortable anymore. And that's just kind of fun for me. But, um, but this person, actually, they were cool. I mean, they, they, he was a young guy trying to sell some solar, right? So, and, and I got it. So I actually, you know, I, I didn't come into it like, you know, oh, I'm going to make this guy uncomfortable. I actually came in with questions and I wanted to find out about solar. So I, I, we sat down and we chatted and he told me all about it. And I was hoping that he had like this boom chart. This is what it costs. This is what it costs. You want to own your own panels? You want to get batteries? You want like, you want to do like, super high end and charge this whole thing uh you know like i hope he had all these different options but of course he did not so what they were doing was the uh the federal government here in the united states the federal government thing right they offered the federal government offers you so much money if you go solar off your power and and then it, it was one of these models where you put solar up then you send all your power to the power company and then because of that the power company gets to use your real estate and then they give you a break on your juice basically is all it was right 
but it took 25 years to pay for the panels. <laughs> so, and I realized that that's what, how it was probably going to go down. But I was really hopeful that he would be like, okay, boom, 25 grand, you can have solar panels all over your yard and your neighbor's yard. We'll show you how to do it legally so you don't get sued. You know, I, I was hoping it was going to be like one of these, you know, we're going to build a solar power compound here type of deals. But, you know, I got a little bit too overzealous. But again, a very nice person. Um, I told him that I would not be buying solar from him, but I applauded his efforts. So that was kind of a fun conversation to have. Nutster2, I love my content. Well, thank you for joining the live stream. I'm glad you like it. Eric Lynn is here. Eric is another person that I got to talk to at Murph. Um, I hadn't talked, I don't know that I've ever met Eric in person. Honestly, maybe like back in the day, we talked for a little bit. Uh, but I've been talking to Eric online a long time. Like, and we were talking last weekend, like smoothie wear days. Eric and I were probably talking about 3D printers. So it was great to get to catch up with him in person. Bamboo multi-material process. We can talk about bamboo if you want. <laughs> uh, more than make solar system from Costco. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I wanted to get on YouTube, have them show me every step and how I could get power for life for free. <laughs> The best is to store it. And see, that's what I was thinking. I just store it, right? That, that's what I'd like to do, but that was not this game that we were playing with this guy. I, I'm not ruling solar out, too. Like, solar gets better all the time, right, too. I mean, it's, it's an evolving technology, just like anything else. So, we'll see. Uh, James, Sonic Alchemy is here. Your grandson used to sell solar? Yeah, I could see how that could be a really tough job. This gentleman was from, like, South Carolina or something. He was from way out. <laughs> the table race video. Those guys, I swear, they do that every year. I don't know how the hotel doesn't, like, just kick them out. Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's nobody standing there at the time. They're doing this table race around the lobby. But uh, it is still funny. I enjoy watching it. I was there. It's like, so... I was in that hotel, but again, I was asleep. Uh, I, was, I, got, I went to sleep very early, but I would wake up at like 1.30 in the morning, and you could hear, like that, I was like just down the hall. You could hear Joel Telling talking to someone at 1.30 in the morning. You could pick his voice out, all, everybody down there in the lobby doing table racing and everything like that. So, it, you know, I didn't care. I knew who was down there, but I don't know what the other, the other guests of the hotel might have felt about it. Hopefully they were all Murph people. Awesome. Zach is down for a meetup. We might have to put that together. The anniversary edition is awesome, James. I mean, it's the Mark III with a gold frame. I mean, how, how can you go wrong with that? So. Uh, for home nuclear? Yes. She doesn't care. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Selling solar in Arizona is like selling handworms in the Arctic. Yeah, it's a lot of sun out there, right? <laughs> she was watching the table race. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, awesome. Eric, yes. Uh, Eric got to meet my wife. She was handing out free beer. So how, how do you, like, not love a young lady that's, you know, hanging out, giving you free beer? I mean, she had it all. Uh, she did really well too, by the way. And I mean, I didn't know what to expect. She's never come to one of these things. She does work for us at the channel. Like, like I said, she does content. She does editing. She does comments. She does emails. She does all that stuff. That's kind of her job. But I wasn't expecting her to like be like, oh great, a 3D printing convention. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah, I wasn't expecting her to be like really excited about it. But she's she's really social, where I'm not like as super social. So she just like hanging out with everybody you know she liked talking and uh you know that that was her favorite part of the whole thing of course they were long days they always are but i think she had a good time she wasn't like she didn't complain one bit 
and on the way home she she was totally fine with it so i'm really impressed with how she did so she'll uh she'll be at earth you can come meet her This is the electromagnet sensor. Have a broken P3 steel. The broken thing is the electromagnet sensor. I guess I don't know that one. Like it has some sort of sensor on it. It personally, the board that I like the most right now for the Ender 3 upgrade, there's a handful of good ones. It kind of depends on price, but right now, that Big Tree Tech Mini V3. Uh, is only like 40 bucks. Um, I was getting like the, the MKS Robin E3D or E3 or whatever, whatever it was called, uh, for like 10 bucks. And you, they started, they go up to 20 and they're fine. They're, there's nothing wrong with them, but you can't get them like that anymore. Uh, so I, the next best one, I would say it, it's not the best one. The, the Robin is only because it was cheap. I, I think the Big Tree Tech version three, mini version three is better. Um, and it seems to be the one that's most common. You can get it for around 40 bucks. So if you were going to do an Ender 3 swap out, I'd get that one. You don't have to mess with drivers. It's all integrated. You get a cool heat sink. You get all the, the plugs you need for a 1Z style printer. So go for that one. <laughs> you had to fix the casters. Nice. Mr. Fusion. There you go. Uh... Model 3, oh yeah, there you go. Store it on the car. <laughs> That's right, she's the, she's the social side of the house. I, I concentrate on things, she talks to folks. That's how it works. We make a good team. Durable on treadmill power, that's never a bad idea. Uh, it is the first weekend in October. I want to say it's like the 5th and 6th, something like that, I think. Romeo Lovers here. I haven't seen them in a while. How's it going? You put in the SKR2. Awesome. Beer was good. Excellent. I mean, she'll, she'll like to know that. Uh, I'm glad she picked out the right beer. I had like, you know, I love drinking beer. I don't get to do it near as much as I'd like to. Um, but, uh, I had like two beers the whole weekend. I was just too tired. <laughs> uh. The one three, the one three was a great board. Um, in, in fact, I think it was a little better than some of the ones that came out after it comparatively. Um, they got a lot of things right on the one three that didn't necessarily translate to like the one four. But I can say the SKR3, um, it's a lot better than the release of the 2, so far. I've, so far that I've tested it, the 3 has been really good. No way, officer. <laughs> uh, you made up for me, thank you. Everybody else had to have the, oh, sorry, there you go. Earth is the 8th and the ninth. Thank you, Mike. You made up for it. Thank you for uh, stepping in and having some beers for me. See how we're doing on a benchy here. Also, I think that uh, this is the final printer that's going to make it to the middle of the shelf back here. I've, I've been threatening to put another printer back there for a while. I think this is the one that's going to make it. There's a few strings. That filament is uh, getting some age on it. But uh, looks pretty good, all in all. Again, where our gradient didn't really come through. But, oh well. I'll print something big and post it on printer. Oh, that's right. I sent Dan a 1.3 and some drivers many years ago now. I'm glad you still have it. Hopefully it still works. It's wispy. I want to get an Orange Pi too. I looked at Orange Pi Zero uh, Twos the other day. They seem to be struggling as well, though they're not as expensive as the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's hard to get. Like the first one, like July 22nd through August 15th or something was the delivery date on that. So uh, it is in Bel Air, Maryland, Lauren. 
That is where Earth is. E R R F East Coast Rep Rap Festival. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We'll check it out here in a second. I'm very happy with my anniversary printer. I'm glad to be a part of it. And Prusha did all the setup for me, so win-win. I'll print something larger off the SD card with the gradient filament and share it out on the Twitters. If you have the Twitters, I am at chrisriley 3 d You can follow me and uh, you can see the anniversary prints if you would like. There you go. Well, this has been fun. Make offers now. <laughs> uh, oh, bamboo. We'll, we'll talk about it here in a second. I did not get to test the bamboo. So, and I, you know, I've, nothing is controversial. Everything's fine. Nothing's a problem until you make it one. Which, you know, I've done before. But let's let our Benchy smokestack here finish. That's the most satisfying part. Where you can actually see the layer. Yeah, that's good stuff. What would I recommend to reduce the wispiness? So, my guess is... Oh, it's going to be super up close. That's a great question, Mike. Um. Something like this, I don't know what this filament, in fact, what is the recommendation for this filament? Here, let's go back, let's go back here. Let's talk about that for a second. It's almost like Mike knows the questions to ask. So they do regular Prusa temperature, they, they recommend for this, 215 plus or minus 10 degrees. Uh, they do say 50 on the bed, uh, which, you know, plus or minus 10 degrees, I usually run 60, but that's no big deal. This one, this filament does have a little bit of age on it. I don't know anything about it, like why, what they did to make it gradient, what, what kind of, you know, polymers or whatever might be in it. But you have to tune per filament, right? That, that's kind of the goal. Um, usually when you stick with a brand, you can be pretty, pretty sure that it's going to be okay with your settings, but different types of pigment and stuff change that. So the, the very light wisp that you see, and let's just take a look at this together. It's probably, you probably shouldn't do this, but we're going to let it cool down first, kids. So the first thing, the easiest thing to do, if you have wispiness like this, these are very, very light, and it really wants to focus on Jesse at Prentice Hall there. They're very, very light wisps, right? To remedy something like this, if you already have them, just hit it with a heat gun just for a second. That'll fix you up. Uh, the next thing I would do, rather than mess with retraction or anything like that, is just lower the filament temperature by about five degrees. You can get down pretty low. Uh, the higher the temp, probably the stronger the part, but a lot of things like this, you really don't care how strong it is. And if you do, you probably don't care about wisps. So lower it like five degrees. Anything after that, you're going to want to check out retraction or just like do a, a quick health check on your printer, right? Um, make sure you've got the extruder gears tuned just right, the tension's good, so that it can work as efficiently as possible. But I think with just a couple of degrees lower on this guy, those wisps would disappear and you'd be good to go. Every filament's going to be just a little bit different though. But as far as a print goes, the filament is nice and shiny. It looks really nice. Bottom. What about top layers? Looks good. I like it. So the 10th anniversary Gold Prusa Edition Benchy 
has been completed. Pretty happy about that. Does Marlin have any uh, intentions on doing resonance compensation for their firmware? They do. Um, I don't know exactly how that's go what's going to come out of that. I know that that has been discussed many times. I don't know in what form, but there are folks kicking it around. So we'll see how see how that comes down. Remember though, um, nothing's free. And we had many conversations about that as far as Clipper goes and, and Marlin and every firmware. Input shaping is cool. It is not free. Be responsible. Remember that. And we'll go into that with like a lot of different videos and, and, and how that actually works and what you're, what you're giving up to get, right? Uh, and that is a great segue into the Bamboo Labs printer. I don't have one because it's a Kickstarter. We got... We got in with a Kickstarter. I did, I've done like two Kickstarters, maybe three over the years. And most of the time it was an okay. You know, I, I went with a company that I thought would be okay and, and they would sell. And they did go okay. But I lost out on one. And I, they, they took a lot of money from folks and they never delivered. And I was pretty upset by that. They completely disappeared. Um, and... I can't get a hold of them. I don't know what happened. There are speculations that that printer uh, showed up as another printer. Like they just swapped it off to another company or they formed another company and just started selling them outright, which is not cool either. But I can't prove that. But nonetheless, that happened. It's over now. I'm not going to be involved in Kickstarters. And I've said that before. It's just not worth my time. I don't want anything that I show to not be what it should have been. You should all, anything that I show, you should be able to return it to that company and say, Chris is wrong. This thing is horrible. Take it back now. That's the only way I'm going to feel comfortable about it. And that is not saying anybody, you know, bad about any content creator or anyone that promotes that Kickstarter. I hope it does awesome. It looks like a really cool machine, um, but it's just not, it's not going to be for me. I, I can't tell you all the facts if I don't have all the facts, right? Coffee fund money for a Saturday morning. Great to see you live streaming again. Live streaming? Uh, live streaming sounds a little more, I don't know, detrimental than, uh, than live. But anyway, Alan, thank you very much for the five. It's great to, to stream again and talk with all you folks. Uh, Clipper on the Android phone. I'm, I, I do, so I did take a run at Clipper on the Android. Um, it does work. The hard part is getting phones that work how I expect them to. So I'm trying to collect some phones. I've already got a couple, but I'd like to have a couple more before I release a video on it so that I can prove that it actually charges and you can actually talk to it, uh, talk to the printer while it's charging. That has been more difficult than I thought. So I plan on doing a video on that soon. Uh, I did not get a test unit from Bamboo. I passed on that. They did reach out, but we agreed that uh, we would talk after they were officially released. Same old Shane is here. What's up, Shane? Yes, and, and Mark, I told them that 100%. They were upset that I wasn't interested in the Kickstarter, but I said, hey, look, as soon as you start selling these things, I will take a look. So if they're, if they're still interested, I'm down. Um, and we'll take a look. We'll peel the thing apart. Uh, we'll do all the things we do. Props for saying no to the Kickstarter hype. Seen way too many people get burned to go down that road. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Alexander, for the five bucks. I just, I just can't do it. Um, there's, there's, there's so many other things that we could do, you know, um, and we'll take a look at it as soon as this thing flies. Uh, I promise that. So it'll be good. <coughs> okay. Put some background music on the stream. You know, that's something I've never done. Ah. <sighs> What upgrades am I going to print for this machine? I don't know. I think for a while I'm just going to look at it. Enjoy my Prusa signature and my number. It'll be good. Looking for the review of the proper release unit to validate the print quality and speed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
to K. Hopefully I got that right. Hello, how are you? Okay, so that's pretty much all I had for today. How long did we go? A little over two hours. That's awesome. We got it. We got it all done. Okay, so I am glad all of you got to join the live stream. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks for all the tips. That really helps out. Uh, much appreciated. You got to see the anniversary printer. Maybe we were the first ones on YouTube with the anniversary printer. Maybe you want to get like a good look at it real quick, like as a whole. Before we leave, I could use it as like my thumbnail or something for the for when I spruce the video up. Here we'll even get like some of the papers out of the way, so we have a nice caption. Oh, let's put our let's do like the YouTuber thing and set up our set up our shot. How we do? We need it like this. There you go. Perfect. We get the coffee cup out of the way. Now that's a thumbnail right there. <laughs> Uh, what did it cost? These were almost 1200 bucks, I believe. 1150 something like that. Not a whole lot more than the regular Prusa, but, um, but you know, it's a special thing. They only sold 1,000. They sold 500 kits and 500 assembled. And we got number 129. So there you go. Okay. There we go. That's it. Thank you again, everybody, for joining. All the support. Uh, I am planning on doing a few of these live streams here in the next couple of weeks. I don't know if there'll be one next week, but there will be one very soon. We've got that, um, why do I keep, for that Zach's 3D printer. We're going to check that out. That should be really interesting. I hope you all join me for that. And there was one other thing we were going to do. Oh, Bill Steele, Chameleon. So Chameleon 2, I still have that kit. I never did anything with it. Bill has a 2.5 version now. So we're going to check that out too. That's going to be like a really wicked long stream where we had to put this thing together maybe a couple of streams so we're going to check that out pretty soon as well so thanks again everybody for joining thank you for hanging out with me it was great to catch up with you all we're going to do this more often and uh yeah that's it for today thank you very much everybody have a great fourth of july weekend all you u.s folks by the way